Salut tout le monde, cette semaine au Quantum Show, je reçois nul autre que John Meadows. So John, if you can talk about us, uh, your background, what do you do for a living, everything? Well, um, it's changed a lot over the years. Um, I was actually uh, working for a bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, for many, many years, but I was also coaching uh, in bodybuilding on the side. So I would go to work during the day at the bank, and I ran projects at the bank, and then I would come home, and I had all my clients to work with. And I did this for a number of years, and it just got to the point where it was very difficult to do both jobs well. And, you know, I knew I could be better at the corporate job if I just did it, but I also knew I could be better at coaching if I just focused on that. So long story short, I made a decision to uh, leave the bank and to pursue this industry full time. And I've done a number of things. I own a website uh, that has a membership area that um, has done really well over the last seven years. And I've continued to coach people, obviously, um, many, many pros and people that you, that you know. Um, but I've also um, gotten involved with other business ventures as well. I have a, a training app for phones, for cell phones. Uh, that's out there. It's been out there for a couple years now. And uh, back in uh, January, I started it sooner, but we became official official in about January, February. I started my own supplement company, Granite Supplements, which has been uh, very challenging, a ton of work, but um, it's been enjoyable as well. It's been fun. So I kind of have my hands in a lot of different things, and that's the way I like it. You know, I was taught by one of my early business mentors to never get reliant on one particular part of income, mm -hmm. to give yourself, you know, other areas to, uh, you know, get uh, funds from so that uh, you're not kind of married to any one particular mm -hmm. thing. So, um, so I've always kind of had that uh, in the back of my mind. I like being involved, being involved in different businesses and different aspects. But I'm a bodybuilder at heart. I've done it for over 30 some years, so that's always going to be kind of the heart and center of who I am. It's uh, and that's why I'm always going to, no matter how well the businesses do, I'm still going to continue to do some coaching here and there, just because I love it and I enjoy it. And I continue to personally train very hard myself. Um, I actually took a couple of days off since I've been here, and that's the first time in over a year I've done that. Okay. So <laughs> um, I think I kind of needed it, but um, so. A lot of things going on, nice. keeping real busy, you know, but uh, life is good. Good. And uh, in uh, which, which year did you uh, do your first show in bodybuilding? My first contest was in 1985. So you're looking at, what's that, 30 or 32 years ago? 85, 95, yeah, so yeah. that's a and, long time. And you turned pro in what year? 2014. So it's, yeah. it's been a long run for uh, It was a long run. I, I want to say I did maybe 16 pro qualifiers. Um, I got second many, many times, but I kept coming back, and then finally it worked out. Nice. And if we can, you can tell us, uh, like, one thing you know for sure for training for hypertrophy. Well, so I'm a little bit of an old school guy. So for hypertrophy and training, I believe your body is very good at adapting to the stress that you put it through. And I don't think that not training hard is the, is the answer. I think that you have to train hard. I think you have to find ways to really push yourself to really, uh, for your body to like have to make an adjustment in order to uh, handle the stresses that you're throwing at it. Um, So, you know, the, the problem is, is I, th I don't think people really know what they're capable of is the problem. You know, there's a lot of people through the years that, uh, you know, I put through a workout and they'll say, I didn't know I could do that. And when you're talking about getting the, someone's maximum genetic potential achieved, in my mind, the only way you can do that is with brutally hard work. Then the challenge just becomes when do you back off and, you know, so you don't get injured or burn out. 
but there's one thing in my mind that's for sure that's needed for someone to reach their genetic potential in terms of hypertrophy, and it's just brutally hard work. It's just pushing yourself, it's pushing yourself through pain. I don't mean injury pain, I mean burn. It's attempting to, you know, train a little, little heavier than before in some cases, or maybe it's a little faster to increase the intensity, or maybe it's to, once you're done with a set with four range of motion, maybe you throw in some partials, you find ways to continue the sets, to work through the pain, but kind of that kind of mindset where you really go after it is like the, to me, that's one of the biggest keys. And for nutrition, what's your take on nutrition for uh, uh, building muscle? Well, in terms of nutrition, I'm kind of one of the old school guys that believe in calories. And I think if you're trying to gain muscle, you have to be in a caloric surplus, right? And this is all very basic, but I think it's largely correct. Um, and if you're trying to diet down and lose body fat, you should be in a caloric deficit. The questions then become, you know, how much protein is needed, how many carbs are needed, you know, and like from a protein perspective, you know, we've seen people using a lot of protein, you know, we've seen guys three, four, 500 grams of protein a day. I'm of the opinion that a gram per pound of body weight is usually pretty good. So if somebody weighs 200 pounds, 200 pounds of protein, I think is pretty substantial. A lot of people would say that's way too low, that's way too low, you need 400. But my experience in working with people is you don't need these massive, massive amounts of protein. Um, and also there tend to be people who are kind of anti-macronutrient, like I'm anti-fat or I'm anti-carbohydrate. And I think uh, particularly in the instance of fat, if you're anti-fat and you don't believe in eating any fat, you know, you, you can't be functioning optimally because there are certain fats that are needed, they're essential. You know, omega-3s and omega-6s are essential, but there's also benefits associated with monounsaturated fats, for example, um, health-wise. Um, there's, even, there's even benefits of saturated fats, you know, your joints, your heart. So I also believe in people uh, having a balanced macronutrient profile. So what is that in, in fat? You know, a typical person might be 0.4 grams per pound. So that person who weighed 200 pounds is now going to have 80 grams of fat um, a day. I don't think you need real super high levels of fat. I know a lot of people like to do that, but generally they're doing that in the absence of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, you know, are, to me are a very usable source of energy. It can happen uh, rapidly, whereas using fat for energy is sometimes a little bit of a longer process. Uh, but there's a lot of anti-carb people as well. Um, but I think carbs are a tre tremendous source of energy. Um, I think that when they're strategically placed around your training, they can serve as a good source of fuel. And I also think that you can replenish glycogen very well. Um, so I think carbs, like use them when you need them. Like if you have a day off and you're sitting around watching TV, then there's no real need for a lot of carbs. But if you're getting ready to head in and do a hard leg workout, then yeah, I'm probably going to jam a lot of carbs that day. So I like to match energy expenditure uh, with carbohydrate intake. And you find people have different preferences. Some people like a little lower, a little higher. And that's okay. But I guess, my, I guess my point with you is I'm a kind of a balanced macronutrient guy. I'm not anti uh, anything, really. It's just, you know, use, use good common sense uh, and make sure your calories are where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So your, your calories should be a balance of all the macronutrients and you should be in a caloric or, or a, a caloric surplus or a caloric deficit depending on what your personal goals are. And if we talk a little bit about supplements, what's your favorite supplements for gaining mass? Well, <clears throat> my favorite supplements for gaining mass are intro workout drinks, mm -hmm. you know, so a source of uh, essential amino acids and a source of carbohydrates uh, consumed while you train uh, definitely uh, to me is, uh, is a very powerful thing. Uh, in terms of recovery, it's extremely noticeable, but you are you know, you are driving not only the training and the recovery, you're also driving nutrients as you train, as you go through all the, the exercises, you're actually driving a lot of nutrients right into the muscle you're training. So, you know, you put them in your body, the right kind, it's very easily absorbable. I'm not talking about eating a meal while you're training, right? I'm not saying 
eat a chicken breast while you're yeah. training and eat some rice. But very usable, uh, you know, nutrients like essential amino acids is really don't even require any digestion. Um, carbohydrates, I've always been a fan of cluster dextrin as well. But um, I, I'm a big believer in that because it, it just has an amazing impact on recovery. You can train longer, you get, you know, real nice pumps. There's just a lot of performance benefits that come with that. And um, anything you can do that really helps your training is a big deal to me because training is kind of where it's at. So, you know, you support that training with some really good nutritional protocols around training, including the intra workout drink. And I, I think that's very, I think it's a very good thing. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. We appreciate it. Bet.